In this episode of Sailing Dark Angel, we grudgingly head into a marina for a few days to try to get our Firefly AGM house batteries working. If you like our videos, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. It's free for you and really helps our channel. Well, we're not big fans of being in marinas, uh, not since we left the last one in Florida. We, uh, we prefer to be hanging out on the hook, and I think that's part of the problem with our batteries. Our batteries have been degrading and degrading and degrading, and we just don't seem to have any power left at all, and we were expecting to have to replace them. But we have somebody working with us, and uh, he's talking us through doing an equalization charge and actually looking after our Firefly batteries the way they're supposed to be looked after. We've been attempting for about a day and a half now to set an equalization charge and get them to 14.4 volts and half amp. Uh, it might have happened overnight while we were sleeping, but we don't know because we woke up to 13.1 13 and zero amps. Uh, the batteries hadn't seen 13 volts in a while, so that's a plus, but uh, we're gonna try and force another equalization charge as soon as it's done absorbing again and uh, see if we can't push these up to 14.4 and a half amp before discharging them to 10 and a half amps and then um, recharging them again with another full charge and see if we can't save our batteries because if we do that's going to save us a whole lot of expense for now and uh, we're going to just upgrade our solar we've seen some panels we like we have to do some installation stuff we don't like. We don't want to lose our our sunbed, but uh, if it means having enough power to live on and to be energy independent, well then that's what we've got to do. So that's the plan right now while we're in the marina. Here's our current battery state of charge at absorbing at 14.1 volts and 13 amps. We want to see that go to an equalization charge of 14.4 and half an amp. So we're gonna keep trying to drive that up today. We still don't have solar showing on this display. Um, hopefully we'll have that fixed again soon. I've got to go through all of our USB cables and all of our communication and see if we can figure out why we lost that signal. We're also using our time here in the marina to do some deep cleaning while we have access to a garden hose. For instance, whatever that growth was on our sugar scoop is cleaned off now. That was really disgusting and it took uh, several hours yesterday to scrub it all off. We just cleaned up our Dodger yesterday and now we can see through it. It's kind of a nice change. It's time for another coffee and get back to production work. Let's see if we can't get a video of this weekend. One of the nice things about being in a marina is showers. Nice, long, hot showers. It's another noisy day in the marina. We've got forklifts, we've got uh, boat lifts, we've got all kinds of stuff going on, but we need to get the work done, and that's why we're here in the first place. We've been trying and trying and trying to get our batteries up to 14.4 volts, as per recommended to get a, uh, an equalization charge or a full charge. These don't really equalize. And we can't get there. So finally we've checked the temperature. Our batteries are running about 102 degrees. That's too hot for them to reach the full 14.4 volts and get the amperage to where it needs to be. So we're going to, we've shut off all the power, we're going to take the batteries all apart and see if we can't uh, clean them up. There is a little bit of corrosion and clean all the connections, check to make sure everything's tight and then try it again and hopefully it's not our inverter. So you can see the connections are all very tight. There's the Magnum. Uh, sensor there's the battery sense for the Victron and all of the connections I've checked them they're all very tight but we do have things like this going on right here which is not acceptable we got some corrosion buildup and these uh, I don't know that they're corroded but they are discolored we're gonna take them apart clean them all up it's gonna take a little time and then we'll try again to see if we can get them to charge up to 14.4 volts the battery switch is off. I switched it off, power to the boat is done. Oh good, we've lost our first washer. You 
need anything from underneath that as a catch-all? No, I need to not drop stuff in behind the batteries. I should have been more careful picking it up. There we go. So all of the negatives at this point are disconnected because that one feeds all of the negatives. On the feed side, we have one feed here. This is the main feed. I'm gonna disconnect that next. And then there's nothing going to the boat. <clears throat> and you can see on this feed here, we've actually got some corrosion here as well. Right underneath the main connection for the power. Fair amount of corrosion. Right here, around where the uh, power comes into the battery. So we're gonna clean that up and move on. We've got a little baking soda solution here. I'm just trying to clean up the worst of the corrosion with that and then lightly sand it so we get a good connection, copper on copper. One of the reasons I think these batteries are getting too hot is there is no air spaces between them and there needs to be a quarter inch air space between all the batteries. Mm. If there's room, there's room up here but I can't see the bottom. If there's room, I'm going to space them a bit. See if I can find a way to space them out. We don't have as bad a space to work in as some boats. I can reach everything. And that makes life a little bit easier. This one you can see is one of the badly corroded ones. That is an issue. Looks like we got rust, sulfation, all kinds of good stuff. Let's go clean it up. So we've got our solution, which is turning blue into a nice color. Maybe when we're done, we'll paint something with it. So the baking soda dissolves the sulfation and a light sanding gets through any contaminants that are on the surface. Bond them back together. So it already looks much better. We've still got some green going on. I had not intended on taking all the fuse holders and everything apart, but this whole assembly was absolutely black. Um, I've cleaned up the cables a little bit. I got to sand them some more. And on the other side, which is really hard to get in here and see. So I have to clean up these cables and the fuse block goes in here right underneath this one. Mm -hmm. Fuse block goes in underneath there and you can see the cables are very black. The fuse holders are very black that all needs to be cleaned up. I don't know if it was some kind of protectant that was put on it that discolored it or if it's just corrosion. But I'm gonna clean them up and sand them back a little bit so that I get a nice clean solid connection. And same thing with these. These ones look okay, but I'm gonna take them apart and check them. So what are you doing now? I'm gonna reinstall this fuse block. Okay. In theory, I'm gonna reinstall this fuse block. Okay. And then I have to take apart the next one, which you, you can see the wires are, mm -hmm. the cable connectors are all black. Yeah. And they almost feel like something's been sprayed on them, so that might be protectant, but I don't have any guarantee of that. The hard part is trying to thread into this, this type of board. There we 
fuse hole or the fuse back in, but I want to clean these nuts up first. Okay. I gotta get I gotta have clean nuts to do this. <laughs> so the nuts in your hand need to be cleaned up? Yeah. Okay. You notice they're not in your purse. Nothing really brilliant about any of this. I'm just taking stuff apart and putting it back together again. Whoever built the system is the one who did all the work. Genuine snap-on ratchet from the 1990s. Back when snap-on was a thing. Are they still a thing? I think they are. All right, we got the battery cables all cleaned up. Now I'm going to move on to the connecting cables, but uh, they're all looking nice and polished. I got to put them all back together, put the sensors back on. The thing I find interesting is you could see everything is disconnected in there, and yet you can hear the pump running. So. What's going on with that? These are the sacrifices Lisa's willing to make to help drive down the battery power. I gotta go out there in the night. <laughs> Look, they're already there. Wait. We're trying to drive it down to 10 and a half volts. And then we'll recharge. Right now, shore power is off. So part of the process for resetting our batteries is to take them down to 10 and a half volts and we've almost got them there it has taken us uh, we're over 24 hours now just being on strict battery power the solar panels are shut off the shore power is shut off the charger is shut off everything's shut off and yet we're over 24 hours on the batteries so the last couple of charges charge cycles that we've done have really helped a lot um, now i'm going to put some uh, the electric grease on the batteries on the connectors that we cleaned up to protect them. I think protect or cleaning the battery cables probably was a big step toward getting this to actually start working. The next step is once this gets down to 10 and a half and I'm done kicking stuff on the floor because it's a mess. Once we get down to 10 and a half, um, we're gonna flip the shore power back on, bring the batteries back up and see if we can get them to four and a half volts and half an amp and that's gonna be a full charge finally but they're actually acting like they're good batteries right now, which is a big, big change from the way they were before. And who knows, maybe we'll get away with not having to buy batteries. So what does dielectric grease do? It just protects it from moisture. This is not gonna be anywhere near enough. There's actually better stuff than this, but this is what we have, what we could get local. So, so you put it on each of those? Every one of them. Okay. We've also added a little bit of space in between the batteries. I have to put a spacer in there to keep it. But these batteries are not supposed to be sandwiched together the way they are. There's supposed to be a little bit of air space between them to help keep them cool. All right, all the connections we cleaned up are now protected. All right, let's button this up and that's a wrap.